and rusty wheels and new antique horns. I walked her to my farm in an Amish neighborhood where simple living's bad. She'd be loved and understood. I put her on a treadle stand and coaxed her away from the turn. I felt her joy and easy with my study and concern. I cleaned her and I owed her, showed her off to all my friends, repaired the hurts of years of years, and let her sew again. Welcome back. Um, I am going to get started reassembling Frida, Frida the fabulous free machine. And as you can see, and if you saw my previous video painting her and everything, I have her balance wheel already on. Here you go. That's better centered because um, I just needed to test and make sure that everything was going to work properly. And it does, so that's all good. Um, just want to get that clutch tightened back up. So I do have my little diagram that I printed out from the internet, which is fabulous because it's been some time ago that I took this apart. So it's great to have a reference to go back on. I've decided that I'm actually going to start putting her back together um, in the reverse order from how I took her apart. So the last thing I did was pull guts out of here. So I'm going to go take her over and put her upside down in my vise on the other workbench and I'll meet you over there. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is take off all of her masking uh, from when I was painting everything. Remember, I cleaned this whole shaft off and everything before, so hopefully it will be easy to work on now. So the first thing I did after I took the tape off was just give every little moving spot a really good oil. Um, just because she was super, super clean before and I didn't want any uh, oil on her before when I was painting her. So she was a little bit thirsty. So now, you know, she's moving and doing her cute little hula dancer gyrations over there for us. So that's good. All right, let me go get my other parts. I don't know if you remember when I was taking this off, this had a really long, sharp burr sticking out of it. So while I was cleaning it, I just hit it with my little grinder wheel on my Dremel and was able to smooth that out, so that's good. Um, this is going to go together in here, just like this. So there's a bar that's going to go on this side here. And I do need to get some oil on these before I slip them in. But there's a slot on the inside over here that this just slides into. So let me do a little work to get all of this aligned properly. Okay, it's actually not that difficult to get this slid in because I can put my hand into the little access hole down here and guide it in. So I'm just going to look down here, get it looped around um, that bar where I need to connect this side of the clamp onto and get that screwed together. But, but actually, before I do that, I need to get this other bar on here or else I won't be able to because it's going to be too close here. So let me put a little drop of my super oil in here. I think that both sides of this are the same, so that's good. Slide it in here, and then this slides through a little slot on this cam here. So everything is sliding at the same time down here and here while this is connecting onto a bolt. And actually, actually, I need to have this turned upwards. All right. All right, so this has slid through there. That is still sliding in the right spot, and this is on the bar. Great. Let me go ahead and get some screws and connect it. Okay, so there's a little access hole. This is what I'm looking at here, in here. Don't think you can see, but there's a little access hole in the clamp. So once I had it connected and I put my oil in there to keep it all lubricated, but 
it's moving freely, which is good. So if I turn it this way, this is what it's looking like. Um, I have a little nut I need to attach over here to keep it on, and then we can go on to the next part. I think that I had cinched those screws down on that clamp a little tight because even though I had oiled everything really well, it was a lot harder to turn than before. So I just backed each one of those screws up from like super snug tight to like a quarter turn freer and everything is good now. So I think that was my issue. I also put a lot of oil in the slides that were down in the casting. Okay. I'm going to see about getting this fork back on here. I'm hoping I can just slide it in place. Okay, so I need to get this fork back on, and the fork has another one of these little bars on a bearing down here I've just oiled up, and this is the one that connects to the stitch length adjusting knob. So I need to slide this in these points here are what's going to line up with these holes that pivot screws are going to go into to hold it in place. So I'm going to try to slide this in without dropping that little bar into the cavity of the machine. Hoping, hoping. Um, hang on, it's wanting to turn on me. Well, it looks like I need to do some wiggling. Hang on. I'm going to pull this little bar off so that I don't lose it. And let me turn this crank here so that I can get this on. There's probably just one point where it fits down. And there it is. Okay. So now that that is done, I'm going to turn this little hinge area down and rotate the whole thing so I can get some pivot screws in here and get this connected in place. Um, oh, shoot. Hold on. I need to adjust this side over here. All right. I think we're good. Let me get these pivot screws in here just to hold this in place for a moment. Okay. For right now, um, I did put this bar back on the bearing over here. And I know this is not final adjustments. It's very, very wobbly. So I'm just going to put my little nuts loosely on the end because I don't know if I'm going to have to do something, you know, finagly to get that stitch, stitch length block in, you know. So I want to have a little bit of freedom here to move it around if I need to. And while I'm in here and things are pretty, pretty easy to access, I'm going to go ahead and put my little... Um, bobbin holder back in. She's, I took her completely apart and cleaned her up. So she is ready to go. There's just one screw right here that I'll need to put underneath here. I think I need to turn this a little bit to get her centered in. Okay, there it goes. Let me get the screw in and get that set. And again, this is another one of those pieces that I can always loosen up and um, adjust this little piece in and out. Oh, that's not going to fit. I can adjust it in and out a little bit before when I'm doing all my final adjustments at the end. Just going to get this cinched in if I need to. I can let it loose again later, but I think that that looks pretty good. Okay, so this is my little stitch length knob. You can see I tried. I left the rust on here so you can see like what the wheel and the front plate. At the point where I cleaned it off the best I could, the rust had still totally eaten through the chrome, through everything, and this is after I'd polished it. Um, so. I'm going to do to this the same as I did to the other after I get it set in here, which is where I come back with a silver oil-based paint that is going to cover that and hopefully keep it from rusting any further. But it has this little pointer that goes underneath it, and the whole thing sets up onto this little cast area where it's going to move up and down. 
Okay, so I showed you that because I'm going to have to flip it up on its back and just kind of do that invisibly um, from the back, from the bottom side here in just a minute. Uh, this bar here is going to need to slide inside of this little groove here. I'm going to go ahead and put oil in there too. Um, so I'm thinking that I have enough space to go ahead and slide it in there, hopefully. Hopefully. Let's see here. Yay, I think I am. Okay, this block needs to get over here. So I can see I need to back this little pivot screw out some so that I have enough room in here to move that around. Ooh, so tight, so tight. Give me one second to wiggle that in. All right, got it in there, thankfully. And from this side, I've got, I'm gonna hold this so I don't drop it down to the little column there. I've got a big bearing screw and I've got a wavy washer that goes over that. So that needs to slide through here and into the little screw hole at the back side of this block. Once I can feel that that's getting started, I will breathe easier. Okay, so that is connected now. Moving freely, so now I can get this. There's a little place for a screw to go through here. That's where this comes through. I'm pointing the little pointer part down. I hope that is correct. That would make sense to me. I'm going to try to line this up so I can screw it in and hopefully that will be able to control my stitch length. Okay, so I just have it set like midway between uh, longest stitch length and stitching in place. And everything looks like it is moving freely. I'll put a few more drops of oil in here. And Let's see, is there anything else that goes down here? I think I need to take some time and put together the bobbin winder and the tension mechanism over on my other table. Actually, before I do that, though, I need to get these pivot screws set. And I pretty much have it set where this fork is, what, from what I can tell, really in line with that groove, so it's not going to bind either way. And the same thing over here. And I think that that's probably as good as I can do right now. So now I'm just putting the nuts on all the way so that they're flush over here and over here. And that should hold them in place so that everything will stay situated. Okay, let me go hit that bobbin winder. Okay, so this is my little painted piece. I have a spring that I just sat back in there. And I'm going to get my little wheel together, the little, again, I had to paint them, but my little heart-shaped piece goes into the larger, okay? And this is the little nut that went on the back. I need to get this tiny little screw to put into the second hole here so that I can uh, go get my screwdriver. Hold on a minute. Okay, so I've got the little screw in. This one goes all the way through. It has the bigger shoulder, which goes in this part, and then the smaller shoulder is the one that goes through the casting. I'm actually gonna put a little bit of oil in there because it looks very, very dry. We don't need that. Okay, that's much better. I'm gonna go ahead and slide that in here and put. Oh dear, I just dropped my little here. Thankfully it didn't go far. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and put my little nut. Remember this nut, it's the one that has um, like a little slot in it, kind of like a screwdriver would go into. I'm guessing that's why 
is to put a screwdriver in so I have something to grab onto when I want to cinch it in. So let's see, it has to be pretty wide. Now that is pretty snug. Um, let me loosen it up just one hair. Okay, when I loosened it up, I can drop it. I, I don't want it to be binding in there. I want it to be close enough that those little teeth can intertwine and move easy. But sometimes when I get it too tight, it just binds in and slows everything down. So I'm trying to find that happy medium point and tighten it at that point. Okay, I'm gonna put my little spring back in here. There's a little hole in the casting that the little toe sticking out goes in and I need to get, there's a little hole on here also, right there you can see that goes on the other side of that spring. I needed to put a little bit of oil on here so that this would move freely and now it does. Okay, so now I'm putting it so that this little hole here is going to match up with the spring that is sticking up. And yes, I am putting this on here with what looks like totally upside down, I know. All right, I just have it twisted in like one or two turns. And so that's going to hold that screw in so then I can rotate this around. Did it the wrong way first. I'm rotating it so that this can come up this way. All right, and I need this little nub here to be up against the heart-shaped cog because that's what's gonna tell it when to travel. Now I can cinch this in. Okay, so this spring should hold that up against the heart, that little part there. Oops, I think I need to tighten it in just a little bit more. If it's too tight, the spring won't work because it's bound in, so I have to back it up just a hair. Okay, so that's good. So now if I turn this by hand very slowly, I can see that the wheel is turning and this is staying up against it. Uh, it feels like some of these teeth are a little bit worn. I'm just going to put some extra oil on my grooves up here. And I think that um, once I get it to go full circle, there might be a little bit of my paint or it might just be rust or who knows what in the little teeth here. But I think once it goes around once or twice, it's going to get all of that worked out. So now this is ready to put back on. This screw is what's going to hold this to go through here and hold it onto a little protrusion on my machine. So let me get that over here. This is one of the hard things about when painting the machines and putting these back on because the little bit of paint that's on here and the little bit of paint that's on here always makes it super, super snug. And I don't know that there's any way around knocking some of that paint off because you have to just kind of force it on and then wiggle it back and forth to get it into position. So here goes. And yeah, I do see my typical paint coming off. I just need to get it worked in so I can see a hole clear through to put my little screw through. Okay, so it is on now. I'm moving back and forth, dusting off all the little, little flakes of paint that had to come off to make this possible. Thank you for your service. Um, this is the stitch length lever. And thankfully, as you can see, it's off to the side a little bit. I've done some machines where it's directly underneath here and it always makes it difficult. But since this is off to the side, um, it moves very freely. So that's good. I like that. Okay, when I put the belt on, we'll see this in action. Until then, I'm just gonna move on to the uh, tension mechanism.
I just remembered that when I took it out, I was like, oh yeah, this spring. I can't put the tension together yet until I get some more pieces in the nose put together because you kind of have to build it around that nose. So I'm putting all of these back in its little baggies so I won't lose them. And we'll probably get started on the whole presser bar, needle bar type area now. One thing though, there is a little hole right here that I believe was for a oil wick. So I am just going to, ooh, these are too narrow. Uh, well, maybe I can make something work here. I'm just going to put a piece of wick and I'll probably have to wrap some um, felt around it because this is a little bit too narrow just as it is. So I can put that in there and soak it a little bit and get it built back up before I move on. I'm just using, this is actually from, um, where is it, Vintage Wire and Supplies where I got this. I think it's for um, vintage fans actually. The old timey metal fans, they had the um, oil wicks. So I got that from them. Okay, I'm just going to trim a little piece of felt, roll it up around that and get it pushed back in here. I don't know if you can see, it almost looks like a little flower there because it's got the red felt around the white center. I'm just going to load it up with oil and let it do its thing. Okay. Okay, so starting from the inside, I'm putting this little bracket in here. It slides underneath everything. And there's a lovely little screw that goes with it. And here, oh, I have to slide it from the bottom. Oh. Okay, I have to put it in the hole and slide the screw in in the hole because it's too big to put in between all of these. Isn't this fun? Okay, give me one second to wiggle this back in. Okay, got it wiggled in place and Why doesn't that work? There it goes. <clears throat> so when this presser foot lifter comes up, this is going to get pushed over here towards the tension mechanism chamber, like that. And then it'll get pushed back from the spring in here, pushing the pin backwards. So there's not a spring in here anywhere. Okay, that's good. Okay, so I'm skipping ahead just because I'm trying to do the reverse of what I did when I took it apart and getting this little piece, this block back in. Remember I had to tap this pin down to get clearance and there was a little sharp burr on that. I've cleaned it off with my little Dremel and so now I can slide this down like this and it's got a little little protrusion that's going up and down the slot over here. So since I've got it on here, now I need to somehow tap this little pin back up, just that little sixteenth of an inch or whatever that is, just to bring it up enough that this cannot slide back off of it. I'm able to move the shuttle out of the way, stick my little punch through here, and tap it enough so that it just makes that little little tiny movement. So now that that is done, I feel a lot safer about it. Hello and welcome to the next day. My battery died on me last night right when I was putting this screw in. So I just wanted to show you this little little three-toed chicken foot looking piece I've screwed back on here and this is a reverse threaded screw so you know lefty tighty. And this thread take-up lever, at first I thought, oh my gosh, what has gone wrong here? But it's actually supposed to move in a curved motion. Um, when I grab the plate, you can see the little slot for it is cut out in that curved position. Well, it looks like I have something in the wrong spot here. Hang on. Move these things where they should be, and maybe it'll move better for me. But anyway, it's supposed to actually move curved, so that's kind of interesting. Now, the next thing I'm going to need to do is get this little post, which is all bearing. It has a little bit of a 
threaded top to it so I can tighten it in with a screwdriver. But I believe this is going to go up here to hold this chunker in place. So let me get that tightened in. And I need to definitely put a little drop of oil in this because um, it's all bearing. It's got a little oil hole on the side that I can kind of wiggle myself into. Okay, let me see here. Got him propped up on a precarious place there, but it is moving good, so I think that is good. All right, then there's one more place to make an attachment, and that is where this little place with the patent applied for stamp on it is. And this is the little slot that the needle bar is going to go into. So I'm just going to pop that on here because there is no other place for it. And it is a standard threaded screw. Okay. So now I should be able to line this little bracket up with this tube and put my needle bar back in. Okay, I've got a light propped up right here, just barely out of frame. I'm going to try to make this work a little bit better. So remember I had to put my needle bar in from the top. So I'm just going to slide it through here, slide it through the little tube. You know what? I'm going to put some oil in both of those before so I can kind of rotate this and turn it on my way through. Okay, I'm just going to tap that little plug in with the little poly side of my mallet. I think it's in good enough. I don't have it completely flush yet. I can always finish that up later. I'm thinking right here you can kind of see a little indent. Um, a little bitty indent right there, which to me means that is where the little screw, because it's got a little point on it, went. That's like my cheat for figuring out where that placement is. And that indent is on this side, which means I need to turn it 180 degrees this way. Okay, so my needle slot is right up. And once more, okay, so if this point is about an eighth of an inch above the center here, and if I put it all the way up to it, okay, if this piece is about five eighths of an inch deep, okay, half of five eighths of an inch is just over a quarter inch, which is going to put a quarter inch to right about here, okay, like right about there. So what I'm thinking is I should be seeing only about an eighth of an inch of this needle bar above this little bracket here. So I'm going to turn it upside down so I have the slot up and push it down so there's only about an eighth of an inch peeking up and that's where I'm going to put my little screw in. If I need to make an adjustment later, I can. If I need to adjust it later, I can, but just like a singer usually has, there's a little hole in the back here to put my skinny screwdriver in and get this um, set in here if I can do this without losing anything. Okay, I had to rotate it down just a hair because it wasn't in line with that hole back there. So once again, I'm going to try to get this up in the little hole and set this screw. Okay, so I got that screw in. Seems to be functioning as it should. I'm just going to put a couple more drops of oil in this little tube and then we can go on to the presser bar right here. Okay, so I'm just sliding it in from the top here. I need to put the washer on first and then the spring in here and guide that spring all the way so I can get the needle, the presser bar through this little block down here. Okay, all is good. 
What do I have in my little bowl here? Okay. Need to keep pushing it till it goes all the way down. All right. Up at the top, there is a little threaded cap. I'm going to put that on. I'm not going to screw it super tight because um, I want to be able to make some adjustments. It's actually a little tight. I think I have some some paint or something in these threads, even though I did mask it out. So what I have is a Q-tip with just a little bit of, I think it's brush cleaner. Um, just it's a slight, slight solventy kind of thing to try to get anything that might be built up on those threads cleaned. Do one more little swipe here just to get all of those really cleaned out and then I'm going to put some oil on it and swipe that around with the clean side of my Q-tip. And I think that should do a lot better. Okay, that's a lot better. That works really well. I did the same thing on this little hole down here at the bottom. I probably should have done that in this tube here too. I just did not think about it. So just to make sure everything stays nice, making sure that I have plenty of oil on these threads. So they will be happy for years to come. Okay, I'm just going to back this out so it's sticking up about, oh, maybe three quarters of an inch here. And if you're ever sewing on these things, it's important that this can move because you need to change it based on the fabrics that you sew. If you're sewing a really, really lightweight fabric, you want to back it out so that there's not so much pressure on your foot down here. So, And you want to be able to chunk it in when you really need a super heavy grip. So this is one of those adjustments that you know, we got to have functioning. Okay, I just put my pretty little nut all the way up, threaded it up because I need to be able to slide my foot on here. And then you twist the nut down and that's what holds the foot on. Okay, so now that is in place. I still have this little clamp and a little screw and another screw here that I need to get back on. I've just snapped that little clamp back on there. I still don't know what it is. It looks to me like it had something to do with holding on a needle threader at some point. You know, I have my parts list. I should look at that. Hang on one second. Yep, I was right. Okay, part number C, one, two, four, five, thread cutter looks like it is a little nub that is sticking out okay so that's what is missing i was right um there's a little hole on either side here and the thread cutter would be like a bar kind of thing that sticks out through there and it is long gone and i don't usually use thread cutters on my feet anyway yes megan mills i know that you do and i know that you love them and i wish the best for you um but I'm just going to go ahead and put it together as if I had my thread cutter. I've got my magnetized little screwdriver here to get me started. Um, and then I'll go ahead and put the other little screw I have is this one that goes into this block that's going to secure the, um, I think I just put the wrong one on here, that's going to secure the block to the presser bar. Okay, I had the right one. It just doesn't go in all the way, it looks like. So I'm not going to cinch this in super tight. I want this to be able to move because I still need to get its adjustment. But I'm just putting the screw in there so that I don't lose it. Okay, I just popped my plate on. It's not secure, but I just wanted to make sure that everything is moving like it should. I love, this machine has so many sexy moves. Watch this. It's going to go down and then go whoosh and then come back up. Whoosh. See that? It like turns. I love that. Between that move and the little hula girl move on the bottom, I think that this is a very sexy machine. Okay, so the last thing I need to do while I have it upright is to go ahead and reassemble my tension mechanism here. And I will get that um, set out set out onto a paper towel actually so I can see all the parts clearly and be able to put them in in order. 
because this one is slightly different than a lot of the standard ones. It's, it goes together slightly different, so okay. All right, ready to begin. Okay, I'm going to try to assemble this, which was very different from standard things. There's this little bracket here with this big long finger and it gets screwed onto this. I'm not actually going to put the screw on because I want to have a little flexibility here. This spring is over here. The finger of this gets looped into that spring and the spring, the longer part of it, goes into the little cavity there. Okay, I'm just going to set that there. And while it's there, I need to get these discs inside of here and lined up so that then I can put this post in, hopefully. Ah, hang on a second. Okay, have that post twisted in just hand tight. This is still loose out there because I need to get my two discs, roundy side together, onto that post before I can swing the spring over it. I need to untwist it a bit because I need to be able to reach. The spring has to be able to reach over the post. And unfortunately, I need it to do this. Okay, I'm going to have to change the order. I think I need to do this whole thing while this is loose so that I can reach it over without destroying the spring. Okay, it's on. My goodness. All right, I'm going to twist this post back into the little threaded spot in the orifice here. And once I get it in, then I'll tighten this screw up. I think actually that's right. I think the finger is on the inside, and then the two discs, and then the outside part of that spring. The next thing that goes on is this little washer with the bar, separating bar. Then my basket spring goes on. Then this piece, and it's got this finger it's going to go into a little hole on the side here, like this. And you can tell I cleaned it. I tried to polish it. This was very, very, very rusty. I'm not painting anything on here because I don't want any paint to interfere with the tension. It's just going to have to stay a little bit worn. But she's over 100 years old, so you know she deserves to show her age a little bit. The thumb screw is what holds the plate together. So that's where that thumb screw came from. Okay, so I don't have it cinched in um, because I'm going to be taking it off again. But at this point, this is what we have. If I lift the presser bar, the foot goes up and down, and when you lift the presser bar, it lifts this little, I'll turn it this way. Okay, so it's up, it's down. When I'm lifting the presser bar, it's lifting this little finger thing. And that should somehow release tension. Right now I'm not seeing how, because it seems like it's just as tight as ever. Um, I'm going to open that up again and peek at what's going on in here. This has a little pin inside of it, but for some reason that little pin is not being pushed down enough. See, when I just push it this way, it does. I'm wondering if that basket spring was in upside down. Okay. I got it. Look, free, total freedom. Now, this is going to sound totally backwards because it sounds totally backwards to me, but that basket spring is upside down. So the smaller part of it is over here. So it goes that little washer with the divider, the other side of this tiny wire spring, the smaller side of the basket spring, which then gets spread out to this big piece with the finger, which is probably why that big piece is there because it needed to absorb everything from the wider end of the basket spring, and then the nut. So when I lift this up now, total free, total free, and down, it's done. So, you know, there you go.
very ingenious. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and slide the little needle clamp in the thread guide basket. This has to be put in at the same time, so I'm going to slide this in, and this little thread guide basket you can see there's a little cutout on one side it's not a complete oval it's like an oval with a notch and I'm believing that that notch is where the needle is going to slide into so I'm setting it like this and then going to pop that up into the needle bar like this and I know you probably cannot see that um, but just trust me that's what I'm doing and there is a tiny little screw that screws on the little thread guide basket thingy. So I'm just getting a tiny little, just using the little head here to twist that on while I'm holding everything in place with my other finger. And then I'm gonna put the little clampy type screw in there. And hopefully that will be good and ready to use a needle. I have no idea what size needle this uses. I'm going to start with just a standard modern modern needle. And then if that doesn't work, I'll go for the slightly longer, older ones that I have in the house. I think that's like 20 by something. And I don't actually understand the 15 and 20 by type numbers, but you know. That's okay. All right, so that is in place and it's not gonna fall off now. And if I tip it, I don't know if you can see, see that right there? That's what I was just putting on. And turning all of this. It's actually moving a little bit stiff right now. I need to go back and recap over the last few things I put in and just make sure that nothing is uh, needing a little bit of extra lubrication or maybe loosening something that I tightened a little too hard. I think it was just the angle I was holding it because as soon as I laid it back down flat like this, she's fine. So that's a good thing. I'm going to go ahead and put the shuttle and the little springy paddle thing that was right here uh, back onto there. I'm still not sure why I needed an oil wick right there. Because from what I can tell, that's just a hole. It doesn't actually go anywhere. I don't think that it oils this at all. I'm not too sure why it's there. But, you know, we replaced it, so there you go. And I did clean out, take apart and clean up the shuttle, and it does have one bobbin. that I have stripped all the old thread off and cleaned. So for right now, I'm just gonna put that empty bobbin in. Bring her forward a little bit. It just should, should just pop in place. For some reason it feels a little stiff. Let me see here. Why are you feeling a little stiff? There's a little spring on here, a little clamping spring on the little shuttle carrier that I took off and replaced, and I'm wondering if I have that set a little too tight. I'm gonna check that out. I think I see my problem. Um, when I was putting the spring back in, that little end is on top. That end needs to be on the bottom. So I'm just gonna unscrew this, put the spring back on, put this little piece back into the bottom, and I think we will be in business. So let me slide that little part over here. And now it's in the bottom, so everything should fit a lot better, that little piece. Okay, I've got that redone, got it screwed back in, and now I'm going to try to pop in my shuttle. And now it clips in, so that's good. See how it moves. I want it to just skim this part, this curve in the metal. It needs to be fairly close to it, but not grinding. It looks good. Um, I'm actually going to put drops of everything everywhere of uh, really good oil along this edge here just in case I don't want anything to damage it. Okay, it sounds good. It sounds like it's supposed to, so that's a good thing. Now there's a little paddle spring thing here 
that I have not seen on some other machines. And it kind of holds the shuttle down when it's over in this position somehow. Not too sure how, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it back on. It's got a little screw here and it sets in place like that. Now this paddle, I wasn't paying attention when I took it off, unfortunately. Once it's, it's kind of like a spoon where it's got a little bit of a swoop and then it goes flat. And when I put it so that the swoop was aiming down, every time the shuttle would come over, it would have to push it. It pushed it up a little bit. And I'm just thinking that has to be wrong because that being pushed up constantly can't be good. So I flipped it over so the paddle kind of aims up towards the top and it's higher, so when the shuttle comes over, it doesn't have touch it at all. Okay, aha, okay, I consulted the parts list. This little paddle is the shuttle ejector, okay? So when the shuttle is all the way towards the front, you have to slide out the slide plate, but then you push the little spoon part of that paddle, and that pushes the butt of the shuttle back up. So that's what it is. It's the shuttle ejector. That is so cool. So I'm going to go ahead and put my feed dogs in. Um, I'm going to slide it in this way, but then I need to turn my machine. My, my presser bar foot, you can see, is still loose, so I can turn that foot out of the way there. I'm just going to set this kind of in place, and then I need to flip the machine over so I can get to the bottom. And I remember it had this really long screw with a little nose that I just dropped. I'm just going to throw some oil on here and get that into place. I have to go through, there's this little fork from below. I have to go through that fork so to make sure everything is lined up right, moving that little fork down. Okay, so it goes in like this, all right, setting it in that way. So I need to make sure I have it oriented correctly. I'm going to slide this in. I'm sliding it in underneath this little forky part right here until I can see these holes lining up, which now I do. I have this little flat-headed screw on my magnetic screwdriver. And let me twist her so you can see there's a hole right here that is big enough that I can put this big old flat head straight through. And if I can get that started, that's great. Okay. Cinched in. Now, let me just see what happens. Well, I have it cinched in, but it's cinched in kind of cockeyed, so that's not good. Let me back that out. Yeah. Can't use that screwdriver. Let me back it out just a hair here. Okay, so it's slightly loose so I can move it around, but that screw's not going to go anywhere. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this plate on top just so that it can hold it flat the way that it should. Let me see if I can find the screw for it in my little bag of plate things and pop that on. I have everything turned so that the feed dogs should be at their highest position. I'm just playing with this because that does not look right from the back, but we'll leave that for another day. So the feed dogs should be at their highest position, so I'm going to tap it from the bottom to push them up a little higher because they are barely peeking through. And that looks a lot better to me. I think I need to push it from the bottom while I screw it in, though. So they're nice and flat. It wants to pivot very easily, so I'm trying to push it right underneath that screw. Stay for me. Get this in there. Ah. Okay, give me a minute. What I'm trying to do is make sure the feed dogs are up high enough while I'm pushing and twisting and everything's going to be right in front of the camera. So give me a minute. Okay, my battery's about out, but what I had to do is kind of hold them in place with the end of my X-Acto knife while I twisted it. 
but I can see that they are set too far back in the plate, so I'm gonna to need to make an adjustment to bring them forward. So let me get a new battery and I'll be back. Okay, so I have spent the last while um, trying to make an adjustment on the bottom here. And what it is is the feed dogs um, aren't centered front to back. There's more space in the front than in the back. It makes the full stitch at the widest width, but it just ends at the back with a gap and, you know, things like that. So I've been down here playing and trying to get this adjusted because it it's, has to do with how this rod here is connected to this fork and things like that. And here's the deal. She's, she has an attitude. I love her. She has an attitude. She has told me that she has been adjusted like this for over a hundred years and that I just need to let her be. I heard that. I heard her very clearly telling me that and I kept going and I feel like I heard her telling me, did I stutter? And I was like, no, you did not stutter. So we are leaving her as is. She's fine. The feed dogs aren't rubbing on the sides of the plate or anything. It's just they aren't perfectly centered, but maybe that's how it's supposed to be. I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and put this little piece in. It's a funky little screw that basically keeps this plate. Hang on, let me tip you up. It's going to go in here and it's the little tip of it is going to be holding up against this little fork to keep it from popping off because it's just slid into place there. So let me get it screwed on. And since this is just to keep that fork from popping off, I don't want it to actually touch the fork. So I'm screwing it until it touches and then I'm backing it off, see, just so that there is a, enough of a gap that things are still going to turn freely because if I screw it on there really tight it's going to bind it all up. So now that that is where it needs to be I'm going to put this nut on um, while I have the screw held where it needs to be just to keep it from unscrewing or screwing in tighter and binding anything up. So I screwed it in until it touched and then I backed it off just enough so that you know, there's a little bit of a space there, but it's going to, let me lift this so I can see here, keep everything moving freely, but make sure that um, this fork isn't going to pop off the front, because otherwise there's, if it got bumped, it could go sideways. So that's what this is, is holding it, so this won't come off. So I'm going to get her box. Mark made her a lovely little oak box, and I, the little rubber feet on the bottom, of course. I'm going to set her in here so that I can get all my final pretty plates and presser bar adjustment and everything done. Okay. Every time I stand up, the cat sits on my chair. Have you ever had that happen? All right. Yay, everything's moving. Okay, so now I'm going to turn my presser foot over, put my feed dogs down and get this height adjusted here. There's a little screw inside that block that I need to tighten up. I actually kind of cleaned up this piece, which is the little ejector button that goes there for when she was in her cabinet that she came with. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put it back on because otherwise I just have a hole there. And uh, it's just a button that will do nothing because it's going to be going up and down like that, but you know, it'll be there in case someone else needs it. So I got the little thingy back in here and I had to clean out that hole to make it fit. So, you know, at this point it's in there for good. But then I, once we put it in or I put it in there, I realized that the little mounting screw for that is out here. So then I had to get my little Dremel with a, I need to put a new sandpaper on there to carve a little spot out. I'm hoping that that little bit was enough to let it be able to sit. And it looks like it is. So yay, sequence, you know, sequence. Okay, um, 
Right now we are good. I'm going to go ahead and put her pretty plates back on. So first I got my little exacto knife here and I have to totally clean out any residual stuff that's in these grooves or else those plates will not go on. This is about the fourth time I've done this. I do it several times. Especially important if you're going to do this, do it before your paint cures completely. At this point, I'm just doing the fine tuning. But um, if you wait until your paint is cured before you go to scrape and clean out your little grooves, you could chip entire chunks of paint out. And that is no fun. All right. Okay, so I'm looking at this, and the last date on it for patent dates is May 20th, 2013. And usually, it seems like the patent date is within, you know, a couple of years of when it's put out. So I'm going to say this is made uh, mid-teens, like we're going to call it around 1915 maybe, just for fun. And uh, let's see if I can just work with this, to try to get it so it will slide in. This was very difficult to get out. Um, just a matter of working it back and forth. I'm going to put a little oil there. Work some really good oil with my X-Acto knife to clear it so that it'll go in. This is always going to be a little bit tougher to get out because that's kind of how they're made so that it won't fly off when you're sewing, but the front one should be able to open pretty easily when I'm done. Okay, I think the back one is pretty good. Make sure you clean the sides of your plate off too. Okay, so I can get the back one in. Now I need to do the same thing with the front. Okay, the front is a lot easier. Um, I can tell you one thing, though. The way that this carrier is designed with this spring underneath, um, I can hear it when it goes underneath the center plate. It's slightly touching. It doesn't sound bad. It actually sounds like a lot of other shuttle machines I have. But I can tell that it does, um, the spring has it pushed up enough that it does slightly touch right here. So I might take a look and see if I can lower that a little bit. I don't know that I can. Um, but you know what, before I do that, I'm actually going to put a needle and some thread on here and see if she's even timed correctly. Okay, so I'm over here at my trial multi-purpose uh, treadle base here and I'm the needles the standard needles this is what I was playing with um, the it's too wide it's too wide this is a very small slot to fit the needles into so I have some other ones in my house that are um, a different shape I'm going to see if I can get one of those and get it to fit but while I was in here, I was like, I'm going to go ahead and wind a bobbin. So sometimes they can be tricky to start. I usually hand wind it around the bobbin a little bit first. And on this, I have their little book. And I was looking at it. And what you're supposed to do is guide it from the bobbin through the little fingers at the top of this fork here. And then down underneath there there's a little nub and it goes like that okay I don't know if you can even see but then I'm supposed to hold it with my hand out here guiding the thread between my thumb and finger to um, let it take it up that way this is a very squeaky kind of treadle cabinet it's for this cabinet was the one that came with that um, Jane Doe machine that I really don't know her history um, okay. It's not going back and forth very well. I don't understand why this is not going back and forth very well. I think this has gotten loose. Let me do some adjustments on this. Okay, I've got it turning now. It was a combination of things. Um, I needed to tighten up this screw, but also there was a section of teeth on this cog that were a mess, 
and it would bind up when it got to that little section. It was probably about half an inch long. So when it would stop, I got to that point, I just had to hand crank it through, lubricate it and everything like that, just to get all of those teeth, you know, worked down. It just, you saw what it looked like before. It's a miracle that it's going now. But now it's got a little oil on it. I need to clean it up. But you can see that the cog is going all the way around. This is moving back and forth pretty well. So I'm going to try to go ahead and get, get it threaded up again. Okay, so I'm starting it off just by winding my thread around the bobbin a few times. I've got my tail over here. I'm actually going to hold it like this, pull this side out, and pop it in so that the tail is being held over here between the end of the bobbin and that threaded part. So making sure that my threads are being wrapped the right direction. I'm just going to get started here. Between my thumb and forefinger, I'm not going to, my whole thing is bouncing around, I know. I'm not going to put a whole lot of thread on, just enough to test it and to see, okay, it is moving back and forth, all is good. So I'm going to clip that, pull this out, and now I'm going to clip off that thread there to put it in my shuttle. Okay, the shuttle has a little groove. The shuttle has a little groove going this direction. I want to hold my thread so that it's wrapping this way. So looking at it here, it's counterclockwise, okay? Pop it in to the shuttle carrier, bring the thread down all the way, and then pull it back up, and that goes around the little tip of a sharp point of a spring there. And if I pull it straight up, now you should be able to see the little bobbin turning in there. So I'm just going to pop it into the machine, get the little shuttle carrier to the front here. Okay. And push my plate over it with the string hanging out. I'm not going to close the plate super tight. It's enough that that can be sucked back in. Let me go in the house and see if I can find a better needle and I will be right back. Alright, so I was able to get a different needle in. That's the size. They're little round shanked needles. I don't know yet if it's going to sew or not. I'm just, you know, happy that they fit into the machine. So, let me get this put away. Um, I also had to do a couple of other adjustments. First thing though, um, there's something about this tension that just bothers me. This spring, I want it to stay down. When I put the presser foot down, I want this little spring here, you know, the little wire one, to bounce back down so that the thread can have some tension up against it. And I have taken this thing apart three or four times while I've been sitting here and I can't figure out how to do it. There's no little hole or groove or anything at the bottom of the post that you can put one end of the spring into. There's nothing really on this side. I tried wedging the end of the spring on this side into the slot in the post. That didn't work. Um, yeah, I just don't know how to, how to keep this wanting to bounce back down. I, you know, held it very carefully when I screwed in the post. I don't know. So we're just going to try it as is. Um, I also had to make an adjustment down here because the shuttle was too tight up against the wall and so because it was so tight there a thread couldn't go over the tip of the shuttle. So it does now. I haven't tried to sew yet. I'm going to put this up here. Up at the very top is the longest stitch length I believe. And everything is engaged. Oh, I need to put the put my treadle uh, belt on. Okay, let's see what happens here. Oops, it went back down. Okay, let's put you back up again. 
All right, there's something going on because this is wanting to pop down. Let me take a peek and see if I can figure out what that is. Okay, so some good news is while I was underneath here, um, fishing out why this kept locking up and I found that, I found another screw that was a little bit loose and when I tightened it, the uh, feed dogs centered themselves. So very happy about that. So now I'm going to go ahead and try to thread this needle one more time and see how that goes. I gotta feed it through this little eyelet here. I don't think I can pull it through. There's a thread guide here, and then I thread it from the outside to the inside. All right, so I put the thread through the needle, and the first, first test is to see if it'll pick up the bobbin thread. And is it? I think it does, I think it does. Let's see here. It's picking it up, but it's, Locked in. Oh, my plate was just stuck on it. That's okay. All right, so it pulled up my bobbin thread. Now I'm going to put some fabric under here and see what happens. Well, it's making stitches. The tension is definitely not right. I'm going to loosen that up a bit here. Okay, that's better, and that is a very long stitch. I'm going to put it down to something a little more medium and tighten that up and give her a go. My treadle pedal wants to go backwards for some reason. It releases the tension. All right, we have stitching. Okay, so there's my very dirty thread up there that I've been touching with my dirty fingers. And this is the bobbin, which is perfect. It doesn't feel too tight one way or another, so just making a simple adjustment here is good. I tried to be careful to adjust the tension on my shuttle before I put it in, you know, so I can pull out the thread lightly, but, you know, with a little bit of resistance, not much. I'm so pleased with this. Um, the treadle I'm using, it's not a Singer, it's a kind of a weird off-brand, and so it's not balanced as well as a Singer wheel is. So that's why I'm having a little struggle keeping her going, but that's okay. It's all right. Everything looks good. Okay, I am going to do some finishing touches on her, make sure everything is settled and that I don't have any extra bolts on my table because that's always scary.
were simple living values, she'd be loved and understood. I'd put her on a treadle stand and go her way to her. I'd help her joy and ease with my study and concern. I cleaned her and I owed her, showed her off to all my friends, repaired the hurts of years of Europe. Simple living's valued, she'd be loved and understood. 